Hello, I'm Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today, we're discussing the third and final book in Cassandra Clare's fantastic Infernal Devices series, Clockwork Princess. If you haven't read any of Cassandra Clare's books yet, you must go read them, especially this series. The book is fantastic. If you haven't read it yet, I don't know why. This is going to be spoilery, and you should not stay for it, unless you want to be spoiled, which I don't recommend, because then you don't get the full effect of the book. Go read it, come back, discuss, it will be loads of fun, and it'll be great, okay? Bye for now, bye. I don't want it to be over. I'm not ready to say goodbye. Okay, so I started this last week at midnight, a little before midnight on Tuesday. I actually downloaded it on my iPad. So I had the iPad version and the hardcover version from Barnes & Noble, which didn't come in until three days after the book was released. Cool. The family tree here is on the inside of the book sleeve. It's not much of a danger. Now, the iPad copy, flip the page, flip the page. This, your first instinct when you see the family tree is, oh, I must know. I just glance at it. Will. Herondale? Lying to Tessa Cray? Lying down? <coughs> what is this doing here? <laughs> Our opening scene of Clockwork Princess is actually with Aloysius Starkweather and Adele. Oh my god! That was horrifying and heartbreaking. I was tearing up. At the ceremony, we actually see a new silent brother that I've never heard of. Brother Cheeman? Simon with a C? Then we jump to the scene where Will and Jem first me. Charlotte comes in with Jem. I could use a partner, someone to spar with. So could I, but I need someone who can keep up with me, not some sickly creature that looks as if he's doddering off to the grave. <laughs> well, then we journey back to modern day time, and in modern day time, Tessa is engaged to Jem, and everything is heartbreaking. Whole wedding thing didn't go down like in my crackpot theory. Very soon we get to know this new character of Cecily, and oh boy, do I feel freaking love her. We had this worm situation. <laughs> now, we didn't really know how demon pox ended up killing you. The Lightwood's mom had a demon pox, and I don't think we ever heard about her turning into a demon. What did father do? He's a worm. I know. You're not listening to me. He's a worm! A worm! And he looks at Will. You know all about it, don't you? Aren't you some sort of expert? <laughs> this worm battle was intense. Cecily, Jumping on that thing's back. Oh! As soon as she did that, she pulled that move. I was like, this girl is related to Isabel. No freaking question about it. And when we found out she was, all the excitement. When Magnus gave that ruby to Will, I was like, oh! He actually made it for Camille. And it's worth like a bajillion dollars. Will's running around with this woman's necklace. And then when he gave it to Cecily, mm, Oh. So they all head over to the Chiswick house where we had that demon party last year. Tessa, of course, wants to fight. You don't think I could fight? I don't think you could fight because you're wearing a wedding dress. For what it's worth, I don't think Will could fight in that dress either. Perhaps not, but I would make a radiant bride. <laughs> Died. This worm was like Men in Black 2 worm. <laughs> Meanwhile in Chiswick Manor. The infernal devices are without pity. The infernal devices are without regret. The infernal devices are without number. The infernal devices will never stop coming. The the Chamber of Secrets has now indeed been opened. So, Benedict has a flair for the dramatic. Then we have the situation with Consul Wayland. I can't, these letters, reading them about Charlotte, I was convinced that they weren't from him. I thought he had been captured. But turns out he's just an ass face in his own right. That moment when Josiah Wayland's head gets chopped off, I mean, I know it's a freaking automaton, but yeah! I hope your head keeps rolling and then accidentally gets stepped on, you jerk face. In that scene, we get mention of a Morgenstern. Amalia Morgenstern fanned herself with a lace handkerchief. Okay, so Morgensterns existed in this time. I, just, I really want a Morgenstern family tree, I just, or I want to know more about their history. I love how the members of the council still back Charlotte. My love for Charlotte Branwell as a character really, really intensified reading this book. I just have so much respect for that woman. What is she, 24 years old? The Cecily Will relationship really tugged at my heart when he snuck out in the middle of the night to go get Tessa, and Cecily appeared. 
And that conversation they had when he handed over the gem brought me to tears. And then we have this Cecily Gabriel line, which a lot of people thought was coming. It was the most likely path for these people. For some reason, I thought I remembered her hearing about Gabriel being a cheater too, or a whole line of Lightwoods cheating on their wives, which made me a little uneasy about this Cecily Gabriel thing. I was so proud of him toward the end of this book. When he wrote that letter discrediting Charlotte, I was so mad at him. Cecily believed in you. We had this Gabriel Charlotte confession. Did you send the letter? Did you send it? Did you get off the plane, Rachel? Did you get off the plane? I got off the plane. I didn't send the letter. Both Cecily and Gabriel let out breasts that they did not know they were holding in this book. I love how Gabriel would walk in and see Cecily training. Just throw out a number. And then at the end when they finally kissed, yeah, five. Perfect. Let's talk about Henry and how wonderful this man is. When he brought up the portal, he brought it up towards the beginning of the book. What? Henry invented portals? Oh my god! I thought that was a thing that had been around for a while. They hadn't mentioned it, but I just assumed because they use it like it's nothing in modern day TMI. <laughs> I couldn't believe Henry is brilliant. I talked about it in my Clockwork Princess theories that I thought Henry was gonna die, and dear Laura, I'm so happy that he did not. We got so lucky with the end of this book. In the middle of the book, it's dropped that Jem actually does have an uncle. Turns out that his line leads to our new heroine, Emma Carstairs, in the Dark Artifices series. She is related to Jem, so boom, boom, which is so exciting because Jem is still around. There's so many possibilities. I just Oh, uh, I love this trip that Will and Tessa take together to get help from Magnus. I already love Magnus. This book just made my love for Magnus so much greater. Tessa, so many times in this book, we see her grab a poker as a weapon. Shadowlanders have their Seraph blades. Rapunzel has her frying pan. Tessa's got her poker! Watch out! Which is interesting because that's how she inflicted pain on herself as well. Tessa ends up having a conversation with Woosley. I really like this conversation actually. Heart divided against itself cannot stand as they say. And you love them both and it tears you apart. House. It's, it's a house divided. If you're gonna quote Lincoln, quote him right. Woosley kind of lays things out very plain and simple. Tells it like it is. And throughout the book we really see Tessa come back to the things that Woosley has said. The causal bringing the Lightwood boys to a strip club. Like are you freaking kidding me? My opinion of the Wayland family has just gone... Then we get this proposal from Mortimer, and he says that if she went, he wouldn't take the drug, and he would destroy it. Jim! You would not. You would not insult me by hurling a sacrifice I made for you back in my face like that. You tell him, Tessa. You sit back down, Jim. When Jim had the nerve to throw that little pack of Yinfen in the fire, and watching Will jump in, and with his burning his hands to save that little bit. It was just heartbreaking. We already feel super bad for Will, and then we have this moment where he just can't help but tell Tessa that he loves her even more than he loved her before. The tears! And Tessa's just about to tell him that he loves her too. The fact that Tessa did not tell Will that she loved her until the very end of the book. Oh, Why won't you tell him? He just says he loves her so many times and she never says it. Is it like a rule that the girl can't say that they love him until they propose? What is that? That's sexist. He's hurting inside. This fight breaks out because Mrs. Black and all the automatons pulled out of a carriage that was following them. Jessamine ends up dying during this battle. Watching her die, I broke down, man. I, uh, no! That story about November 10th and how Will was always really upset on that day and how Jem realized, oh my god, that story just, the tears, so many tears. Okay, Mrs. Black, a severed head on a stick. What the heck? I just had this vision of Game of Thrones when Sansa walked outside and sees her dad's head on a stick. <sighs> okay, Tessa taking it upon herself, launches herself at the door and falls down that ravine. And next thing we know, her angel has come off her neck, grown to full human size. There is a piece of an angel soul trapped in her clockwork angel. We learn that Ethereal is actually the angel that was trapped in there. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is Ethereal not the angel that Valentine Morgenstern has shackled in his basement? I mean, I hate to say it, but Ethereal, you know, you gotta be more careful. What are you doing, man? Gabriel talking about Will. Will may be a reprehensible person, but at least this demonstrates that he is not a reprehensible shadow hunter. Magnus responds, A very magnanimous statement, Gideon. I'm Gabriel. All the Lightwoods look the same to me. <laughs> this scene where Magnus goes down into Henry's laboratory is just the sweetest thing. I love Magnus! 
We finally learned what Tessa is. Her mom was indeed a shadow hunter, like we said, but her dad was Edelon, the demon. Her mom didn't have marks, so apparently the marks are what makes the baby come out as stillborn. Now what does this mean for her children? Through her line comes Jace. I talked about Sophie ascending before, and she did end up ascending, and she did end up with Gideon, and I just love that storyline. Jem is going to die, and he tells them to stop looking for a cure after he just gave permission to look for the cure. So we're led to believe he's dying, and I believed that he was dying when Will felt the connection break. We've never really seen how the Parabachi bond really works. Just hearing in detail how it feels to be ripped from your Parabachi. So heart-wrenching! And the fight with the werewolves just was so reminiscent of Jace. Where were we? Jim is dead. I fully and wholeheartedly believe Jem has died. And I was just appalled that Jem had given up. Cecily and Gabriel just went out and ran that whole errand for you. Okay, Cecily and Gabriel's errand. What had Benedict freaking ordered? Demon porn? What is wrong with this guy? Then things start to get real interesting. Charlotte makes a final call to the Enclave or the Conclave or everyone. Now no one shows up except for three silent brothers. Three silent brothers! Brother Enoch, and Brother Micah, and Brother Zachariah! Immediately, um, Brother Zachariah? Who is he? Honestly, like, Cassandra Clare! Good job with that one! I did not see that coming at all! I'm thinking, like, maybe he's Will's dad? I don't know now, what the heck? They take Henry's portal. Henry's portal! I feel like the portal should have been called the Henry. So Will accidentally traps himself in Tessa's cell. Who finds them naked in bed together? But Mr. Magnus Bane. Wonderful! How wonderful was that? I got scared because I thought it was Mortimer. Well, said a very amused voice, this is unexpected. But then we have Bridget defending them. The loyalty and the badassery. Ah, oh, yes! I kind of wish we got to know Bridget a little better. We never have a real conversation with her. We only hear her stupid songs. And the Silent Brothers are fighting, and Brother Zechariah is fighting near Will, and the hood falls back. I just broke down sobbing. The Silent Brother was Jim. <laughs> what? What? And I don't know why I wasn't more suspicious. I really was accepting that Jem died. So Tessa ends up saving the day here. Didn't see that one coming. Obviously it wasn't an easy end, but once she turned into a Thuriel, I felt like things were just like, done. We win, we're done. It was very quick. It was only three books. I could do with another three, Cassie. I really could. After the big reveal that Brother Zachariah was Jem, Jem just takes off without saying goodbye. When Jem comes back as a silent brother to cut, to cut his ties with Will and Tessa, how could I say farewell to you? We're really happy when we end the book part of the book, and then we get to the epilogue, and it's 2008, and it's immediately jarring because Tess is in regular clothes. She's talking about this bracelet she's wearing, which is her 30th anniversary gift from Will. She starts talking about her life with him. I was hysterical. Hysterically crying. I loved hearing how Magnus comforted Tessa after Will had died. So Jem is a silent brother. That means that Jem has been helping Clary and Jace and stuff in the future. This means that Jem is gonna be a big part of, I think, City of Heavenly Fire. The Jem half of the epilogue. He is cured. What? <laughs> what do you mean you're Jem again? I didn't realize that you could come back from Silent Brotherhood. And I don't know in Jem's case if it's because he couldn't really completely be a Silent Brother. It's like he was chronologically frozen and then he was brought back to life. It's been a few months in City of Glass. City of Fallen Angels and City of Lost Souls, I feel like they happen in a pretty short span of time. So my thoughts are, and I think this has to be it, the epilogue of Clockwork Princess comes after City of Heavenly Fire. <laughs> We know Brother Zachariah is still Brother Zachariah at the end of City of Lost Souls. Jace and Clary and all those people find the cure for Jem. I want to see Jem turn back into Jem. It's just amazing how, even though this is the end of the series, Cassandra Clare manages to put that thought in our mind. She manages to put a cliffhanger for the other series into the end of, of this series. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable! He doesn't tell the story, obviously, because we're getting that story in 2014, man. We also see Jem's uncle who shows up with this 
fancy schmancy sword that is going to be Emma Carstairs. All the little pieces that Cassie pushes into place will always come full circle and it's just so much fun. Like Tessa and Jem can be active members of the Dark Artifices if they want to be. Jem is related to Emma. I wonder if her and Jem will reproduce now. And I'm curious if Jem is gonna share his story. Brother Zachariah is gonna share his story with the kids. How is that gonna go down? <laughs> anyway, I just, I can't believe this is over. You couldn't not be happy with the end. In the end, we got our threesome, basically. The best possible way things could have worked out, worked out. The, on the family tree, it would appear that Tessa and Will's son, James, actually got married to Cordelia Carstairs, Elias's daughter. So Jace is related to both Jem and Will, and a distant cousin of Alec. What are your feelings? What were your favorite parts of this book? What was my favorite part of this book? The Will and Tessa in the Mortimer prison cell. Definitely a highlight. Magnus and Henry working on the portal in the basement. It was just the best scene. <laughs> it was just so good and beautiful and just a wonderful end to the series. Thank you for watching. Please share your thoughts and feelings. I'm Christine. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Carstairs, Herondel, and Lightwood families family tree. But here we have Gideon and Sophie's children. See extended Lightwood family tree to see what happens to them. Tease! What a tease!